how do you play a light tank properly and how do you not play a light tank properly? That's what we're going to talk about in the first battle. Now, ideally, if you're a beginner player, you would be much better off with a more armored medium or a heavy tank. But we're going to get into those later. Don't worry. And if you want to send me your replays, put them down on my Discord server. Link to that is in the description of the video. Now, how do you play a light tank? Just like it's played here. You go, first of all, to take map control. The enemies, the Sheridans, are doing it wrong. They are sitting together in the same spot as the heavies. They're not adding any value to the team by pretending to be heavy tanks when they're light tanks. So, those two Sheridans, not very good. You can already see that. And now, the enemy team is in a bit of a problem situation because you never want to be surrounded by the enemy team. You never want to all bunch up in the same tiny location don't want to do that ever the one thing you have to do to get out is to push through one side fast that is what parts of the enemy team are doing right here they're pushing the fv they're pushing the amx 50b and obviously awful play there by the 4005 and the 50b because if you're a paper autoloader you don't want to be the first point of contact you want to drive around the map you want to fire your four shells you want to reload and then you want to approach again you don't want to have to tank shot against the mouse or any 100 because you're gonna lose that fight you have to play dynamically now here's the thing ls on fire here is using the four shot on the bat shaft it does have uh, 30 more in the clip and it does have something like 400 more alpha damage at the expense of having to fire one more shot now whichever gun you use on the bat shaft doesn't really matter obviously this one has more dpm if you want the more DPM at the expense of having to fire another shell, sure, go for it. I'm not going to make a choice there. My recommendation is try both. See which one does better for you. Very simple as that. Um, because obviously, if I do better with a three shot, but you play the th three shot and it sucks, and then you do a lot better with the three with a four shot, what is my recommendation? With? So in this case, try both. See which one does better for you. I would also do the same for the E100. Try the big one, try the small one. Whichever one works better for you, use that one. It's not like the IS-6 where one gun's awful and the other one's just better at everything, basically. So, it's not not, not that the kind of thing anymore. It used to be that. But, now, we have a situation. That Sheridan, just look at him. No awareness, no nothing. Just drive it in like that. And now, there are two heavies over there. So what do you do? Do you fight the heavies? Are you crazy? No, you're gonna escape forward. You're gonna escape into the Sheridan. Sheridan's a one shot, take him out very easily. And there you go. Now what are you gonna do? Are you gonna fight those guys? No, you're gonna evacuate. You're gonna get the hell out of there. You're gonna get as far away from those fat heavies as you can. Because distance can act as armor, can act as time, right? Because that guy is gonna take a lot of time to get towards you, which you can use to reload, reposition, to angle if you're in a heavy tank, for example. So you don't want to be too close to the enemy unless you're fighting them right in the moment. If you're not fighting them, you want to get yourself some distance so you can approach your next fight with as much care and caution as possible that you make sure uh, that you can win it. Because again, if you don't have the ex exit plan before you entry, you're not going to have an exit whatsoever. So 2v2. There's one way to win this battle, and that is to simply drive around the cap circles and uh, cap the cap circles that the heavies are not at. However, the heavies can counteract that by technically splitting up. One goes B, one goes C, but then they're going to be susceptible to this. The E100 is currently being attacked by both the Batchet and the Sheridan. And uh, now this E100 is going to die because the I-7 is in no position to take out that Sheridan and help him. And now this battle is over because the heavies have fucked up and there wasn't really much chance for them to win anyway given who's playing the bat shack. But remember, the map's your friend. The more of it you use, the better you're going to be. And if you all bunch up in one tiny little corner... You only have one option, that is to push forward with everyone. 
you don't do that, you are gonna lose. Now, the Bat Trap is a vehicle that I recommend to advanced players. 5, 10, 15,000 pounds. 628 is a vehicle that you might want to begin your medium tech journey with. This one, the E50M, this is a vehicle that I would be comfortable recommending as a starter medium to get into how to play them, to have a tier 10 that you can learn the ways of the medium tank with. If that's still not enough, if that, that's still not good enough, don't worry, we're gonna get into an excellent heavy tank in the next battle. That is all, because obviously I recommend if you start the game, start off with a heavy. Then mediums, lights, and at last, tank stroke. If you want to go into tank stroke. So, because that's basically how they are at fun and to play, in my opinion. Or maybe you just love tank straws, you just only research tank straws. That exists as well. But my recommendations, start with the heavy, go to the medium, then go to a tank straw, if you even do that. Or you just stay stuck at the heavy forever, which, eh, it's not that funny. But here, run. Run. Why would you stay in this position? Tell me in the comments, is there one reason to stay in that position? Or should you just run and get out again? Distance, the map is your friend. You don't fight when you lose. You get out when you lose. You reposition, you change your approach, you change your position. You don't just peek in the open, you don't sit in the open and wait for the enemy to kill you. I mean, the majority of players still do that anyway, which is why this game's so damn easy once you figure it out. But that's uh, something else. So, here's the thing. Why would you stay in a disadvantageous position? If you can get out. Especially in a very mobile vehicle like a 628. You don't want to do that. You run. You disappear. And here, again, you have the advantage. That VK90 is busy with the other VK90. Swoop around the outside, he's not going to hit you. Boom, free damage right there. So, again, take advantage of every advantage that exists in the game. The map, the positions, the teammates, the enemy. All of the mistakes. Convert the enemy's mistakes into your wins and try to somewhat play around your own team's mistakes right sure if you go alone to one side and there's nobody there you're gonna have excellent crossfires you're gonna have a great time if you go alone to one side your entire enemy team is on the other side and the entire enemy team rushes you because they're on your side you gotta get out you're just gonna die of course so think with the battle. Think as the battle develops. Don't just make a plan at the start of it and stick to it. Adapt to the battle situation. In this case, 4v4. However, three of these guys are on two of the enemy. So, what is the, the course of action here? Of course, kill the E4. The E4 is the easiest target. You've got to watch out for the back because there are going to be two guys behind you. The 183 is currently mad that nobody helped him. And that's a good thing, uh, because 183s are a cancer to the world, and nobody should ever help them. So, there's that. There's one exception. That's the 183. If you see a 183 getting shot, cherish it. Because that's a good thing for the game. Now, in this case, who has the advantage? 628, of course. More armor, better mobility. Obviously, less alpha damage, so you have to put in more shots, but you can shoot twice for every time the grill can shoot once. So you have a very clear advantage right there. 10 second reload on the grill. So you're gonna be getting close. You're gonna flank him. Again, use the tank's advantage like Cheese is doing here. And then take him out. That is how the game works. Know what your tank can do. And then play your tank's strengths against the enemy tank's weaknesses. That's about it. So obviously you first have to know what those are. Now, Rhinoceronte, there's a very useful thing in a one-shot 183. A one-shot 183 isn't useful for taking damage, but a one-shot 183 is very useful at blocking a position. Because that Rhinoceronte cannot approach the position the 183 is aiming at. Otherwise, he's dead. Which means that he's sort of stuck in the position that he's in. Now he's trying to push forward, because that's his only option. If he tries to push into the 183, he's going to get shot in the ass by the 628. So there you go. 5,800 damage. Very well played there. 
and another excellent display of if you're in a bad situation, get out of it and make yourself a good one. If you don't, you're just going to be stuck in a bad situation and you're going to die like the guys did on Fault Despair. And now we get to the heavy. VK90. Great tag. Definitely recommend picking this one up. Obviously, you ideally want to start off with an E100 with a 6TP. If you like those kind of vehicles, this can also be a great choice afterwards. And look at what's happening here. I mean, it's blurred because we're looking at the stats. Look at the stats. What are the stats of the vehicle? What are the stats of the vehicle? What can it do? We're taking map control here, right? There is nobody on the decap. You push through the decap. You take the space away from the enemy team. Because now, this entire line, the Minotauro, he has a problem because he's surrounded. There's a guy behind him. There's a guy in front of him. If he goes back, he's going to get shot. If he goes forward, he's going to get shot. So he's in big trouble. And the VK90 is excellent at side scraping. So if there's one tank that belongs in the houses, it's this one. Right? There are very few tanks that benefit from playing in the city part over the middle or the medium part. There are very few tanks that do that. The VK90 is one of those kind of tanks. And now Minotauro is dead because he got attacked from the back. He got attacked from the front. Now, the enemy team has a lot less map control, but as you can see over there with the Kara and the E100, they are trying to get themselves out of that position by pushing forward, pushing into the medium, pushing into the tank store, trying to take out those guys, trying to find an advantage again. And they do by taking out the Project Louis. But on the other side, the Arctica goes down. And now what is important? There is the XM66F. Low alpha damage, high DPM, very good turret armor. You don't want to necessarily approach it directly, especially when alone. But this guy doesn't seem very competent, as that's perfectly fine. And the other two heavies are also moving towards this position. So the XM66F is the vehicle that you want to fight in this very situation. The other two heavies are coming. You have quite an armor advantage, a side scraping advantage over the XM66F. Still has a lot of a lot of turret armor though, but look at that look at that side scrape. Look at that lovely side scrape. This is how you play a vehicle like this, and that XM is completely, completely helpless right here. Not just because he's a worse player, but also because he can't use his tank as well as he should be able to. Like, look at him. Look at it. What what is he trying to do? He failed to pen five times, and he tries to pen again that's just sad and i don't know about these subscriber replay videos i hope they are adding some value to your world tank blitz skill but the majority that you can take away from all of these excellent replays is that the enemy's mis that the enemy's mistakes are often a bigger part of you winning than the things that you do right if you just watch the enemy fuck up and exploit the enemy's mistakes, you're already going to win 60-65% of your battles. Right? Just watch the enemy fuck up. They are, they are going to. And obviously at the same time, you have to try to avoid your team fucking up. Because if they do fuck up more than the enemy team, you're still going to lose. So in this case, again, they're not playing together, they're not playing very well. That 260 is obviously screwed. The E100 is just sitting out in the open. Like, look at, what is that position supposed to be? He's exposed to basically any angle on the map that exists within this middle corridor, and there is no place that he's gonna be safe. And again, if you don't have an exit plan, you will not be exiting the fight. That XM didn't have one, that E100 didn't have one, you should have one. Always think ahead. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen in 10 seconds? What's going to happen in 15 seconds? That is also what's going to help you become a great player. And the VK90 is obviously an excellent vehicle to have in your garage as well. It's easier to play than the Batch It's easier to play than 6 to 8 But nonetheless, it can be somewhat difficult. But if you can play it, this is what's going to happen.